entanglements, entanglements. <laughs> we got to talk about the it's entanglements. Like what's going on? We got the man Kanye running for president. We got the uh, UFC fight last night. I mean, Pop yeah. Pope, Juice World album. Um, man, we got NASCAR drivers throwing blows, squaring up. You know, I mean, it's a lot. It's going a lot on. to break down. It's a lot to break down. <laughs> let's start. Let's start. Uh, just recapping the past few weeks. You know, we still a new podcast, so thank you for tuning in. Um, episode two and three, man, how'd you feel about them? Uh, I think that it was important for the people, especially uh, to, to hear, um, you know, the culture and the insides of NASCAR from somebody yeah. who not only competed, but competed at the highest level, who, uh, you know, won the Grand the Grand, um, mm-hmm. grand Down. Grand Am, um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, man, just to hear his perspective, to hear how, you know, he started driving at 40, so anything is possible. Like, it was just a motivating yeah. episode, man. And and then to listen to Jams, him, uh, man, really, really just popping off right now, you know? Him, him getting a lot of got, getting a lot of attention, him, uh, man, doing well um, musically. And, uh, man, I feel like that um, him protesting and him giving his stance as a white rapper in hip-hop, which, you know, which is black, like he said. Um, I think that's important for people to hear too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He acknowledged that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, All that it, was real. And, and you know, I've been telling you over the past. Oh yeah, clarity. Let's clarity, say it again. Man. Clarity, clarity. <laughs> go, go, cop some merch for real. For real. Care pack, clarity care packs out now. I see cool. them. <laughs> but yeah, man. Nah, I mean, you seen this uh, fight? Recently at NASCAR, I thought that was uh, usually reserved for you know malice in the palace or uh, or hockey or something like that. You know what I mean? Like man, the fisticuffs like- is uh, coming to NASCAR. Nobody's immune, you know. Hey man, I thought Floyd Mayweather was sponsoring. You feel me? Come on now, <laughs> come on now. Man, they, they throwing hands. Look, man, they, they straight off the top rope like WWE, man. I'm like, come on, what, what's, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, man. Who was it? Uh, Noah Gragson and Harrison Burt. Burt. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you didn't get a chance. They got to the that, video. Man. We'll probably put up above. But, yeah, man, they got the video of they hopped out the whips. They hopped out the car right on the track. They didn't even wait to get back to the pit. No. Got up in his face like, what's up, man? I heard you talking. <laughs> you know, and I'm looking at him like one of them got their mask on. The other one doesn't. So I'm like, yo, y'all already mad close. Yeah. Like, relax and fists yeah. start flying. You know what I mean? Ain't, ain't nobody immune, man. If if you want to sit there and think my sport is higher than your sport and this and that, I'm just waiting for the fist to come out on the golf course next. Hey, bro, somebody going to throw the fist on the golf course, man. That, that, <laughs> that, that birdie was illegal. You feel me? Like it's coming, it's coming hey, for sure. <laughs> they they still mad at Tiger. They still mad. They still mad at him. Let's talk about Yeezy, man. Let's bring that. Let's bring Yeezy up, man. Because being from Chicago, man, we we gotta. We gotta I I don't know what's going on, really. You, you know, wanna, I, let's go there. Let's go there. I, I, I'm confused, man. I, like you know. All right, all right. Let's let's break it down. Let's break it down. So, <laughs> a few years ago, I, I went to the Pablo. I went to the Pablo tour. Okay. I wasn't at the show where he broke down, but. You know, at one of these shows, he's on his floating stage, and then he starts saying, I would have voted for Trump. I'm not voting for Hillary. Yo, Jay-Z, don't bring your shooters out. You know what I mean? And famously, after that show is when he got hospitalized, you remember? So they canceled the rest of the tour and everything. And back then, I didn't think anything he was saying was that crazy. I mean, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not saying that black people can't be Republicans. He might be misguided, but I don't think that him supporting Trump necessarily means that he's got a mental illness right. or that warrants a mental illness, you know. He might have one, but just saying that, I didn't think was like, you know, cause for hospitalization. I guess other people, when, when they hear me say that, they say, what about Jay-Z and the shooters? Both might have shooters. I mean, like, come on. Like, if anyone is going to know, if anyone's going to know the arsenal that Jay-Z has, it's going to be Kanye. Right. So I'm going to trust him in that point, even though I don't agree with him. So, you know, regardless, fast forward to now. I mean, you know, we saw him at the MTV Awards state that he wanted to run for president. We know he's Trump's man. So, you know, he was talking about 2020 for a while or he was 
or what? Well, yeah, he was talking about 2020. So at first it was like, all right, he's going to wait until Trump does a sting. Because this was around 2016 when he was talking. Right. I don't even think Trump made it in the office yet. So he was talking about 2020 he was going to run. Then Trump made it. And then he started saying 2024. So now in my mind, it's like, all right, he's really setting up for eight years of Trump. Right. Now, you know, COVID and protests and what have you. I guess something's changing his mind. He's not supporting his dude anymore. And now he's out here talking about, I'm running. 2020, 2020 vision. Best I mean, I, day ever. I, I love, yeah, yeah, 2020 has been something else already. But <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 to, to be real with you, man, like, I love to sit down with Kanye and just pick his brain, man, because yeah. he, he famously said George Bush doesn't like black people. So I'm just yeah. like, oh, man, like, what changed now? Right, right, right. We what know Trump don't like black people. Trump don't <laughs> like Muslim people. Trump don't like Mexican people. Like, I mean, does Trump like? He likes rich people, I guess. Hey, man, you know, the green dollar. But I, I, I want to know. Kanye's man. rich. <laughs> I, facts, facts, man. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'd love to pick his brain, man, just to see, like, where he's coming from. Because all we've seen are tweets, right? All we've seen is, yeah. like, him putting this stuff out on social media. We haven't really seen any, any real action. So I'm just thinking, like, man, is he just trying to sway people to write his name down on the ballot? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 what's the real goal? What's the end goal to this? <laughs> you know, a lot of people claim, or I'm not going to say claim, but they suspect that him running is actually him helping Trump because he'll, I guess, quote, unquote, split the vote right. between Biden and him. Um, I mean, we know that Trump's base is Trump-focused, so... It's wild to me, Kanye being such a staunch Republican and saying that if he was running and Trump wasn't running, he would be a Republican. But now that he's running against Trump and Biden, he's going to be an independent. He's also, you know, really late in the race. So he's not even eligible in six states to actually run. Right. So it's kind of a wild statement to make. And then, you know, you, if you look up, he didn't actually officially register yet. Yeah, and, and that's why president. it's so confusing. That's why it's so confusing because he's not a stupid so, dude, you know. Yeah, it's like he's just adding, he's just adding jargon into the uh, atmosphere yeah. to kind of, you know, distract people. So, like, I really would hope that if you were a Democrat, you wouldn't sit there and say, "Oh, well, Kanye's running and he's cool. Let me vote for him now." It's like, you know, stay focused because it's kind of crazy for people to just be like, "Kanye's running, he's gonna split the vote." Like, all right, now all black people just automatically vote for a black person, you know, or yeah. Democrats a, as a whole are going to just, I, you know, I would hope people aren't that short sighted, but you know, you never know because we were saying this in 2016 about Trump and he right. made it. So weirder things have happened. Wilder weirder. things have happened. Right. Weirder things have happened. My <laughs> have happened. You know, speaking about weird things. Oh man. This entanglement. This entanglement. <laughs> hey, you know what? I saw Did you watch memes. the clip? What'd hey, you I think saw, about it? Hey, I saw some memes. I saw some memes, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, people putting out memes like, you know, Jaden and Will are worth $350 million. I don't even have mm. $3 million, so I can't comment on it. But look, man, let me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. First and foremost, I respect Jaden. I respect Will. Yeah. Great, yeah. great, great artists, right? Great actors. Um, Will, mm. uh, a great musician as well, and, and really a leader, right? Like, he yeah, always puts yeah. out positive messages. Like, he always, mm -hmm. you know, shows up and shows out, right? Um, but let's talk about, like, on a man-woman relationship thing, right? I don't yeah, care. Who, yeah, break it down. Way. Break it down. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. They took a break, right? And this is what yeah. I got from them talking, and then they had the, what, the red table talk, right? So, so they took yeah. a break in their marriage, right? They decided to take a break. But they were still married, right? Yeah. She got into this entanglement, you know what I'm saying? With this mm. blue audience, right? I but, like the wording. I like the wording, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Found better than it actually is. Yeah, look, man, look, man. Let's, actually, let's... before before you actually get into it, let me just let the people know how really, really crazy this is. Because apparently August was um Willow's friend. Now, I guess he was going through some problems, whether it be health problems or mental problems or a combination of both. Right. But the fact that <laughs> that's the daughter's friend, you know what I mean? And then he comes around and he needs some help. And right. here comes, you know, healer Jada. 
She wants to put her arm around him, help the young man. Yeah. She did more than put her arm around him. <laughs> yeah, young doctor. But Jason. I just had to let the people know. I had to let the people know. So break it down, bro. Hey, what, what's, what's your uh, thoughts on this? Hey, my thoughts are this, man. Like, I don't care what big words you use to describe it. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Let's be 100, man. Like, Come on now. Tell them the truth. Will, Will Smith is not an ugly dude, bro. Will Smith, Smith could, could, could easily date other women or see other women or do his Come thing. Come on now. Stop, stop it. We talk about Big Willie style. He's famous. He, I mean, at the height of his career, he was, what, demanding $20 million an episode? Come on, man. Come on, man. So it's like, it's like I feel like she might have took advantage of that a little bit. Like, they were on a break. Yeah. They were on a break, bro. And, like, especially so close to home, right? Oh, I'm healing him. Man, you don't heal him with the booty. Like, you know nah, what I'm saying? Like, that's toxic. That's yeah, toxic. Yeah, like, 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 what's up with some conversation? What's up with some, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, some meditation. And look, up, man. Like, like, yo, that's cheating, bro. Like, you know, they they were still married, even if y'all weren't taking I listen, you know, I listen to the... Uh, Hey, and, and listen to this, man. I, I was listening to the uh, Button podcast uh, just yesterday. And, you know, Mo, he uh, he spoke out and he said, no grown man can be taken advantage by a woman. In this situation, I think it's pl- pretty clear. Yeah, he is a grown man. Right. And I'm pretty sure men can be taken advantage of women just like how women can take – I mean, just – men can be taken advantage by women just how – women can be taken advantage of by men. Right. You know, it might not be a physical power thing where she's pinning you down. There's a power dynamic, right? He's looking at you to give him guidance, not to necessarily cloud that guidance with, put, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Right. You know, you don't necessarily need to take someone at their most vulnerable state and then, uh, I guess, complicate it with... Uh, Matters of the heart. Let me let me start sounding poetic over here. Yeah, but right, right. you know, it's a wild thing, bro. I mean, at some point, he probably thought they were in love. I mean, over the years, this has been a a rumor, and I guess now it's just been confirmed because there's been love letters from him leaked in the past, and right, right. I mean, saying you know, like he took got- it very seriously, and then yeah. she apparently, you know, listening to their conversation, she uh took it as something to just rebound from what her and Will were going through. And then when she figured out that not what she wanted or, you know, she got what she wanted, she dropped the young man. Now he out here in the world still crying for her. So, (laughs) yeah, man. I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you think, you know, I'm always right in saying that men really can't be taken advantage of by women or, you know, they both got what they were looking for out of that situation there was no power dynamic there was no manipulation i think that's 100 percent wrong bro i'm gonna be honest with you come I, on, I feel, like, come I, on I, I feel like i feel like because just because we're men bro like we we're not allowed to have feelings you know what i mean we're not exactly allowed to, we're, exactly we're not allowed to want to be vulnerable with somebody especially in will's case right they got kids together bro it's not like come she's on, like some random female like that's his wife yeah that's the yeah. mother of, of Jaden. you know what i mean and his daughter it's just like yeah. it's like man like you know if you can't be vulnerable and and family, they're old enough to know what's going on too they're old enough now to know what's going on too yeah. so you know what's going on in their mental what's going on with Jaden and willow you know what i mean like that every every what's up with them fair thinking person who heard her say entanglement bro look at that shit like yeah, 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 yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me let me take my contacts out for a minute. Hold on, man. Like entanglement. Like said, I think she used the word therapizing. <laughs> I think she said therapizing too. I'm like, yo, you just pulling words out and you creating words. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just say what you got to say. You know, Will sat there and he said, "All right, Jada, but what did you do?" He said, "What did you do?" Pretty much. He's like, I mean, your your answer is you're making it poetic and you're using these big ass words, but you're not getting to the point, shorty. Like, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like oh, look, boy, let's man. be let's be people right here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> right, right. And then he said he, he was gonna get her back. Hey, hey, man. He loved and you know, her. there's been uh, there's been talk of 
there's been talk of him and Margot Robbie actually being involved during that whole time period because I right. guess they had put out two movies and right. their chemistry looked like it was more than just an actor's chemistry, you know what I mean? So, right. you know, you never know. I guess they really just have an open relationship at the end of the day, but now they're sharing it with us, so hey, we're out here discussing it. Yeah, they're discussing it. And when you put it out there in the world like that, or like the way August did, I mean, honestly, it's it's one of those things, man. It, it becomes a question of, you know, because cause honestly, she, she said that Will was, 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 he was in the know, right? But he yeah. didn't look like he was, he didn't look like he was in the know to me. He looked like he was either high or he was crying for a couple hours. Yeah, man. My man, his, his eyes was red. He was sitting there like... Man, <laughs> you know what I mean. He, he, was, he was distressed, bro. You know what he, I mean, he was distressed, man. He wasn't. He wasn't in cahoots with that shit. Like, I mean, yeah, you hey. can see it in his face. Yeah, and I don't. I don't want to get you know too, too gender too or specific right. out here, but let's be real, man. If it was if it was a man doing this, right, I think it would be different. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I was just you know he was on a break. I was out here going at some young girl who is a friend of our children, you know, it would be, you know, it would be seen a different way. Like, all right. All right. Man. But, Messy, man. Messy. And they, they putting Jada's face that's on. That's what Future. they got going They on. putting Jada's face on Future's body. Like, come on. Come on now. Come <laughs> on now. Female <laughs> Future. Now they got somebody. Jeez. Now they got somebody. Jeez. Come on, oh, man. Hey, throw, man. Uh, throw, uh, throw a Jada movie on for uh, Toxic Tuesday this week. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Come hey, on. So, so this, uh, me and you were having a discussion the other day, man. We were talking about yeah. this, this Pop Smoke, this Juice World album. First of all, I, yeah. I, want, to, I want to, you know, especially you um, from a music standpoint, I want to hear your opinion of both albums. I haven't listened to Juice yet. Right. I can't speak knowledgeably on it. Um, but, you know, he did. Congrats to Juice World. He did uh, achieve the highest sales week out of any genre this year. I think he sold 450,000 first week with this album. Um, so that's great. You know, what I've heard from people who've listened to the album is that it's more rock inspired. He was always rock inspired to me. A lot of his melodies were, you know, taken from pop punk. He was inspired by that era of you know, Blink-182 and some 41, but he could rap his ass off. So it was like both worlds he was dibbling and dabbling in and he put them together in a way that made sense and it wasn't like, you know, cut and paste. But, you know, from what I've heard, the album is a little bit more rock inspired. You have, I think, two Halsey features. Um, Marshmello makes an appearance on the album. So, you know, it was cool. I think it's something that if he was alive, he would have definitely put a stamp on it. It didn't seem out of the realm or out of the norm for him. Kind of, you know, similar to uh, Mac Miller's last album. Right. The uh, album that dropped after he passed, not the album that dropped, like, right before he passed. I'm pretty sure it was called Circles. Mm -hmm. um, but that album was a little less rap, and it was a little bit more singer-songwriter and ballad heavy and we've heard that type of stuff in max music before so kind of seeing rappers like take stuff from other genres that they've incorporated and then go full fledged with it is cool yeah um i you know i just wish they were around to see it you know what i mean because you know mac passed and then this album dropped and you can really see like oh man he you know really all of his influences are actualized if you want to listen to him rap he was rapping with the best of them if you want to listen to him you know sing his heart out he was actually in the studio with john bryan and john mayer right. so you know he had good people around him who really you know helped him see his vision through i just wish he was alive to see that people actually rock with that so if he really wanted to keep going in that direction he could just like juice you know because i'm sure when he was alive he really wanted to do the rock thing. He did do the rock thing. I mean, one of his biggest tracks uh, sampled Sting, and now Yellow Card is suing him, still suing him. So that's kind of wild for Yellow Card to not back off. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, they still want their piece of the pie. But 
you know, it, it's one of those things where it's sad because I really wish Juice was here to see that people rock with him going in this direction. Who knows, you know, maybe like he would still be dropping like rap here and there, but like, who knows, you know, we got a young black kid who's really going to put his all behind this rock music and maybe could revitalize the genre in a sense. Cause I mean, there's people still making rock today, but it's not the same. It's not like hip hop, which is the number one genre. It moves the culture. And I'm not saying like, oh yeah, we got to get back to rock, but look, man, like, we all know rock was created by black people and past few decades, it's been hard for black people to be taken seriously in that genre. You have your bad brains and whatnot, and you have your, your token black guy in a rock band here and there, they might be playing drums or bass or something like that. But to have a kid really be the front man and the singer or the songwriter and whatnot, and he came from the hip hop culture and moved so effortlessly between that. I wish he was here just, you know, in person to see that people really embrace that sound and know that he is welcome to, you know, spread his wings and move effortlessly in between the genres and do what he sees fit rather than, you know, I got to make this to sell records or I got to make this to be accepted by the black community or whatnot. He could really do what he wants and people still, you know, rock with him rock with because him. he's dope. Now on the other end, you got pop smoke. Now pop, We've talked about it. We've talked about it. I listened to the album. I like the album. He's got a few cuts on there that are like authentic pop. Now, Pop Smoke, if you don't know who he is, young rapper from Brooklyn, lost his life in L.A. Um, just a few months ago. But he was really one of the uh, ambassadors of Brooklyn Drill. Now, I don't want to go too crazy, but just to let these people know... You know, Drill was founded in Chicago, which was kind of an offshoot of trap and Southern rap. Period. And, you know, I guess people thought of Chicago rap as Kanye West and Common, you know, maybe even Do or Die or Crucial Conflict or Twista. But it never really had this gutter or raw or savage, for a lack of a better term, sound that Drill music had. Right. And drill music kind of, you know, it, it had those early trap influences, that Southern hip hop influence, a little less lyrical, more direct. Um, yeah, man. A big, a big theme was killing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was one of those things how early trap music, before it was defined by the production, it was more like trap music was like, you had to rap about the trap. You had to rap about, you know, selling drugs or whatever hustle you had. Drill was kind of like that. It had a certain sound, but it was more so about the topic. You know, these people are in Chicago are really rapping about their, you know, inter-neighborhood beefs and whatnot. And you'd have to really listen to be like, yo, who is he talking about? You know, what is he talking about? This is really personal music. Anyway, to speed up from that, after Drill kind of... I'm not going to say fizzles out. People still make drill, but I, it got to a point where it was just too violent. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, you had people like Little Dirk kind of try to mold their sound to a more mainstream sound and things like that. You seen Chief Keef get dropped from his label. So it was kind of like, where's drill going? You got these dudes out in the UK. Now they're rapping the same type of stuff, but because they're in the UK, they have, you know, influences like UK garage and grime and things like that, where the, the BPM is faster. There's different pockets that these guys are trying to find. And then you have these like elements of like, you know, it's garage, but if you don't know garage and don't kill me music nerds, but I'll say dubstep, you know, how that the WAP, like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, like in, in, in some of these drill records or these UK drill records, they're rapping with the same intensity as people from Chicago, but the beat would, you know, whoa, 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 it'd be like, yo, okay, like this is crazy. It's a new energy. It's a new hype sound. But, you know, the, the same thing that UK artists have been fighting for for a long time still was happening. You know, they're not really getting that respect in America. Right. And sad to say, maybe it's just because of their uh, accent. You know what I mean? People can't get past a British rapper, British accent rapping. Right. But they were getting close. They were getting close. Okay. Fast forward a little bit to where we are right now with Pop Smoke. You know, you have Pop, you have Fabio Foreign, you got 22 Gs, you got Chef G. 
you got Smooth L. All these names are Brooklyn people, Brooklyn rappers. Not New York as a whole, Brooklyn. These guys are online. They come across UK drill. They like that energy. But like I said, maybe they don't really rock with, and I don't want to speak for them, but maybe they really don't rock with that accent. So they sit there and say, you know what? I can do that. They reach out to Axel Beats, who is a UK producer who's now flooding Brooklyn with the sound. And now you got people like, you know, Fabio Foreign with Big Drip, or you got Pop Smoke with Dior. Right. And now you have American accents on those UK drill beats. So now it's Brooklyn drill. Chicago went to UK, and now it's in Brooklyn. Right, yeah. So, you know, for Pop Smoke's first two projects, Meet the Woo Volume 1 and Meet the Woo Volume 2, you know, a lot of people would sit there and say, oh, like, it sounds like he just made the same song 12 times in a row. But that was the energy. You know what I mean? And you had Fabio who, you know, he's got a certain flow. Everyone has a certain flow and whatnot over these beats. But, you know, it's it's a new genre or it's a new subgenre. So if they kept on going, who knows where they would take it. But, you know, Pop tragically gets gunned down. And 50 steps up. 50 says, yo, I'm going to make sure your album is number one. We're going to, you know, get Virgil to design your cover like you said you wanted. And, you know, I think 50 did what 50 does. You know, he kind of sat there and said, hey, this guy said he was inspired by me. So that's kind of a vested interest he has in wanting to work on this project. But, you know, not nothing against 50, bro. But I'm, I'm going to say it like this, man. It really sounded like 50 was trying to make an album, but he was still stuck in 2003. Because it was like, like there's some really dope songs on this project. But then there's songs that are like, you know, specifically for the ladies or, or, you know, you got R and B tracks. They're, they're stretching his sound out. You know what I mean? That's the and sometimes I, I, That's I think he sounded I'm... awkward. Yeah. yeah. I think he sounded awkward mm -hmm. on a few of those tracks. So I understand what they were doing. It was a number one album. You know, they tried to make his, his uh, sound a little bit more mainstream, but I didn't think that they had to do that because people rocked with the sound he had. Right. He didn't necessarily have to water it down or gentrify it. Yeah, going back yeah, to that's what, a long explanation, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Going back to what you said, man, like that that's what I heard initially, right? Everybody was like, oh man, Pop Smoke sounds like an old school 50. And like for me, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and like for me, I was a 50 cent fan when he first dropped. Come people, on now. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he was heavy, yeah. right? He was heavy. So like mm -hmm. putting that thought process in my head, I already went into Pop Smoke's album to listen to his album with expectations, right? Because it's like, man, uh, old school fifty—that's a tall order. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 out. yeah. But you're, but you're right though. The cadence of the album, man. There's some R&B joints. There's some slower joints. Then you got some 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 low key drill shit. Like, I mean, it, it's just one of those situations where it's like, man, like, what's Pop Smoke's sound really? You know what I mean? Like, like you said, it, it, it kind of sounds a little bit more like fifty than than his sound. You know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I I feel you on that. I feel you on that. I think I think fifty. You know, he, he's a good it was dude. cool. Yeah, he's a good dude for pushing it. But but you know, yeah. You know, everybody has their own original. Probably should have kept his hand out of the studio. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, helped out with the marketing. But it is wild, man, because you know, this week Juice is number one biggest sales week of the year. Last week Pop was number one. Mm. You know, and then we mentioned how Max album was doing back yep. back when, you know, he had passed. So you know, it's a sad it's a sad thing to, you know, have to really come to grips and, and um realize that, you know, some of these artists potential isn't seen until after they pass. They pass away, man. It's, it's like crazy. Yeah, it's like a dead artist is big business. Yeah, facts. It happens in the art world like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the artists, the artists, artists, artists can work their whole life painting, and mm -hmm. yeah, they can sell. They, their, they might try everything. to, you know, they could be selling their painting, struggling to sell. Yeah, yeah. two hundred bucks, and then when they die, it goes up to twenty thousand dollars. Like, come on, you know? exactly millions. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So it's crazy. I mean, look at Basquiat. He, he, you know, he's famous now, but he right. was struggling when he was alive. You know, so. Exactly. It's one of those things. But, you know, speaking on Pop Smoke passing, you saw that uh, LAPD found his uh, or arrested five people in connection with the murder. 
Yeah, apparently they didn't know him personally, but it was three adults, two two minors or two juveniles. So it's a sad situation, man, because it seems really random. It just seems like these were people who, um, you know, did these type of homes, home invasions in L.A. And they saw Pop Smoke's address get leaked online and they went over there and they uh, did what they did. But, um, yeah. you know, to know that they didn't know him personally, that's one thing. But it's like, did you not know this was Pop Smoke? Not that, you know your notoriety might save you. If someone wants something, they're going to try to get it. But, you know, is it that random nowadays? Is it that random nowadays? Like, (laughs) you can't travel out here without somebody staring at your your whereabouts and tracking you online. So, and it's sad to see that minors were involved too. It's very sad. No one should be breaking in and, and, you know, putting people's life in danger. But to have minors be involved, it wasn't. Yeah, it didn't sit right with me. It didn't yeah, sit right. Man. I was like, all right. Yeah, man. It's, it's it's a lot of funny, funny stuff going on out here, man. Like, you know, I mean, you know, rest in peace, pop. Yeah, rest Pray in for peace, his pop, family. Man. And uh, you know, you know, police on 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 civilians. Uh, shoot, black on black crime. You know, brown on brown crime. White, even white on white crime. Like, man, we we got to get to a place, man. Where we but we kind of value life a little bit more. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. It's just, uh, it's, it's sad, man. I mean, nobody should have to, nobody should have to worry about somebody breaking and entering their house or, you know, have to worry about their yeah. kids going outside to play and catching a, a stray bullet. I mean, I, yeah, I, we got to do better, man. We got to do better as a people, you know, as, For real. as a, as a human race. So uh-huh. man, on, on a lighter note, Hamilton. Come on. Bring us back. Bring us back. Bring Hamilton. Us back. Hold on. Hamilton. Bring us back. <laughs> Hamilton. 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 Hey, man. Hey, man. You Hamilton. saw it? You peeped it? It's amazing, bro. It was amazing, bro. I mean, and did you ever see it live or you just caught it on Disney Plus? So so I caught it on Disney Plus. Unfortunately, I couldn't see it before COVID hit. Um, mm-hmm. But man, I, I've had friends for months telling me, raving about it, telling me how great it was, telling me, you know, uh, about the plot, about the delivery. You know what I mean? I, I know people who've seen it two or three times, and I'm just like, man, like what yes, I would, sir. what I wouldn't give to go and see that beautiful piece of art in a theater right yeah. now. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. when 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 will we ever get back to that point where we can go sit in a theater? You know what I mean? So it's, hey man, wear your mask. Wear your uh, mask. Uh, oh if man. everybody would have worn the mask, we might have been like the rest of the world and been getting back to regular life. Hey man, tell them again. You know, people want to make <laughs> tell this a again. political issue. Wear your mask. <laughs> it's not a political issue. This is a scientific issue. Yeah. Don't cough in my face. I won't cough in yours. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. These are facts. But yeah, man, I, I gotta, I gotta see it. I gotta, I gotta sign in. Hey, man, so, the music was amazing, man. The music was amazing. Yeah. Like the plot was amazing. Um, Lin Manuel mm-hmm. Miranda is the writer, and he's actually the one yeah. who play, plays Alexander Hamilton. Like, shout out to him, mm-hmm. man. Like, so this like, version on Disney Plus had him. Yeah. In the play. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, it's amazing. Because I know he was he was in like a few of them, but when it really started getting big and they were reproducing it, you know, in Chicago, you know, in in other cities and things like that, they definitely used different casts. Yeah. So it was even you know even then all of those other productions were sold out, mm-hmm. and on top of it, people would be like, "Oh, did you see Lynn though? Did you see Lynn?" So yeah, it was yeah. one of those things like, "Oh yeah, I saw it, but I didn't see Lynn." You know what I mean? I didn't see him personally. So right. that's cool that they're showing his his version on disney plus now you've been you've been to plays in real life how did how did the uh i guess how did the on-screen adaptation live up to like your normal experience of seeing theater live uh to to be honest with you man the camera work was superb i mean they focused on what they had to focus on um the angles mm-hmm. that they got when when they were uh, addressing uh, a certain part, you know what I mean, in the uh, play that mm-hmm. you had to focus on, that you had to catch, you know what I mean. That was a part that was an important yeah. part of the plot. Like, I mean, it mm-hmm. was like, like I said, everything about it, man. I, I damn near shed a tear, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm out hey. here, I'm out here like Will. Hey, messed up, man. Hey, like, <laughs> you know, I was emotional. So I mean, 
It was, uh, man, it was beautiful. If you guys, hey, have- man, but it's a good way to get people to learn history. Yeah, and that's a fact. And that's a fact. Because yeah. you know, it's it was like I said, it was a lot of hype, it was a lot of excitement. Mm-hmm. But to have that hype and excitement around a historical story. You know what I mean? It's like, did you even have this excitement in school? Right. You know, it, it, it was dope for Lynn to sit there and say, hey, you know, I used to be a rapper back in the day. I still got some chops. So let me use my talent to uh, make this story interesting. The story of our forefathers in this country. Let me let me educate y'all through music, through rap music, essentially. Rap. You know, that's rap. another crazy thing for me. It was a lot of, it was a lot of, you know, elderly white people talking about it, it was amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like, yo, you haven't, you've never, you know, given that type of acclaim to rap, but it right, shows right. you that, you know, once you take yourself out of your preconceived notions, mm-hmm. there is some beauty. You know what I mean? Rap can be, uh, it could be powerful, bro. Essential. Yeah. yeah. Powerful. That's the, powerful. that's the right word. It can, it can teach you. It, exactly. it can teach a lot of people. Exactly. So I like that. I like that um, aspect about it. Yeah. Now, let's let's get to this controversy, bro. Let's get to this controversy. Uh, I guess now people are looking at Hamilton like, did you know he owned slaves? Are we <laughs> bigging up a slave owner, you know, a slave master? Are we glorifying him? Did the story accurately portray that he had slaves? Like, is it more right that we're celebrating this and they glossed over these things i didn't watch it so i can't say but you yeah, know did yeah. they did they get into any part of his dark past uh alexander hamilton in particular they did not touch on that subject but there mm-hmm. was in the plot right um mm-hmm. they did talk about slaves they talk about slaves being Black people in general, not 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 just mm-hmm. slaves, but black people in general, having black battalions that were involved in the revolution, which mm-hmm. is huge to me because it's like, yeah. for some reason in twenty twenty, some people, people still don't know about it. People still don't realize that black people had a part in creating this country, so it's kind of crazy to me. Exactly, <laughs> but Come on. So I, I think that them in certain that that bit of history was powerful and important in its own. You know what I mean? And this is one of Alexander Hamilton's guys because. Because back in the day, you know, Democratic Republicans, right? And that, and mm-hmm. actually they had uh, radical Republicans who were abolitionists. You know what I mean? Who were abolitionists. Yep, yep. And, that's, and that's, that actually ties into Abe Lincoln. That's his party, right? And, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I feel like, man, like, I feel like that Hamilton, in a fun way, kind of bought it kind of bought and gave credit to the black community being involved in mm-hmm. you know, gaining our independence from yep. England. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and like you said, it's not taught in the history books for some reason. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, but uh, they didn't emphasize it as far as like put it on the forefront. But I mean, it was an all black mm-hmm. cast pretty much, bro. Yeah. yeah, all, yeah. All, all, all the leads were black. So it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, and look, look, my, my thing, I haven't seen it, so I can't speak to it. But I think at this point, I think at this point, you know, I guess if you're a kid and this is your first exposure to the topic, sure, maybe you should, you know, have a reading, you know, companion to go along with the play. Right. Because, you know, just like a movie, you're not going to be able to put everything into two hours. You're never going to be able to put everything into two hours. Now, you know, did he glaze? over it i can't speak to it because you know i still haven't seen it but you know this is still something for entertainment so i'm sure he wanted to hit the big issues um but i guess at this point you know if you're our age or even a little bit younger you should know that you know these presidents held slaves it should go without saying you shouldn't have to have someone else tell you that you should go in there with that knowledge like hey man like i'm learning about our history i'm not you know, I'm not glorifying it. I'm not praising it. I'm not putting this guy up on a pedestal. This is just what happened. And it's a cool way of teaching me about it. Right, like right. all these guys had slaves, yeah. but you know, I don't need Lin-Manuel to tell me that they had slaves. Right, right. Maybe, you know, maybe he could have delved into it, but at the same time, it's like, you should know that for yourself yeah. and know that this still is entertainment. So they're going to hit on the big topics and try to 
smash however many years under two hours. <laughs> hey, this this Mosby fight. Let's let's, I mean, let's get to that. Cool, UFC. Bro. UFC. All right, man. All right, man. You, 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 you the topic got, of hey, the topic hey, of the day. The topic of the day, man. Hey, you got strong. The topic hey. that we've been waiting for. Hey, you got the topic strong. that we save for last. The topic yeah. that we save for last. All right. So I tuned in yesterday, man. I tuned in. Yeah, I'm not, you time. know, I'm not gonna sit here and and act like I tune into every single fight. But this was one of the fights that you had to tune into. I don't care, bro. Mass Vidal versus Usman. It was one of those things where it was like, I don't know if this was the first one, but it was definitely on Fight Island. So within, you know, this whole COVID era, UFC has been the league to not stop. You know, I know NASCAR is going. I know golf is back. But UFC did not take a break. They kept going through this whole COVID thing. Dana White has, you know, gone on record to say that he's not even missed a paycheck for people. So he's keeping it going without people in the stands. He, you know, he's still selling pay-per-view tickets. Um, but, you know, this Fight Island was a creation of of something by the league to keep things going. So you can go over there, you can fight in an octagon where they say it's a COVID-free area of you know a 10 mile radius so to me that means they're on this island and anywhere they go within 10 miles there's no covid so they're going to be there they're quarantined they're fighting they're getting business done so it was cool to really see fight island get implemented um you know during the cards and the fights they were showing aerial footage the island was a legit island. They're out there somewhere. The octagon looked cool. You know, there wasn't a crowd in there, but they still had enough people where it sounded like a crowd. I'm not going to lie. There was still enough people in there, whether it be cameramen or managers or people in each other's corners or or even, you know, announcers. There were still people screaming, yeah, do that, you know, so it didn't seem too different to me. Um, but I checked out, I checked out, you know, you know, a few of the fights before the main fight. Um, I want to give a shout out to Thug Rose. I know that's what uh, that's what her nickname is. But she went out there. She did her thing. She um, represented. Man, I'm telling you, every time I see these female fights, man, like I've never had a problem against it. But you know, you always hear people say, you know, do we want to see women fight? Do we want it? Man, some of their fights are better than the male fights. Some of their fights are better than the men's fights. Come on, bro. I still, I still remember Holly Holmes with that kick right to, um, what's her, what's her name's neck? We don't even know her name anymore. She used to be the top female fighter in UFC and and now she's not even mentioned at all. (laughs) She got that, she got that, uh, kick to the neck and all yeah, of a sudden now she's, kick. Mm, <laughs> now, now she's in uh now she's what wwe or something yeah, she's wrestling yeah she's wrestling man. come on g yeah. scared her out of the whole league but yeah man shout out to the thug rose she did her thing she she got the shiner the whole big black eye but she did her thing g aldo versus yan something happened bro and aldo kept taking yan down or i keep Keep saying it the wrong way. Yan keeps taking Aldo down. Yan keeps taking Aldo down. They were they were doing well for a minute, but you know, Russian bantamweight fighter Peter Yan takes Aldo down, and for the last two minutes of their fight, Mans was painting the floor with Aldo's blood. The man stopped fighting back. He was down. He had his hands over his head. And this Russian just stood over him, pow, pow, pow. You can see him not fighting back, but he's not tapping out. Now, now the refs were like, look, he's got heart. He's not giving up, but this fight should be stopped. <laughs> it was like a minute. It was a full minute where people were like, stop the fight, stop the fight. I know you saw me retweet Action Bronson. Bronson was like, stop the fight. A lot of people were like, stop the fight, like, yo. <laughs> somebody made a joke like, yo, these refs must get paid by the minute because he's dr- he's dr- dragging it out right now. Like, Seriously. bro, Yan was beating the dog shit out of Aldo. <laughs> and 
if I could put a clip up there, I'm going to put a clip up there. I don't want YouTube to take us down. Just a short clip. But man, <laughs> no, it was nasty. It was nasty. I was like, right. I, I'm like, I'm like uh, Buddy from the Rocky movie. Throw in the towel. Throw yeah, in yeah, the yeah, towel. Yeah. Man's was getting molly And I was like, after a while, it didn't even feel good to watch. You just seeing this man's head get knocked in. I seen a few, you know, back of the head punches. It was like, yo, stop the fight. Hey, it's so they up. finally did as stop the, viewer, the fight. Um, as, the viewer, as the viewer, you know when they should stop the fight. But for some reason, they don't know when they should yeah. stop the fight. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. It's like, the I'm like, yo, ref, what do you think is going to happen here? You think this yeah. guy is going to roll over and get up and start fighting? He right. stopped moving, this you know, like he stopped three. fighting back. He just sat there, bro. He, he, he went into the uh, fetal position and did not move. The guy was just gang, gang, gang. So it was like, all right, man, stop the fight. Um, now the next fight, the actual next fight that I did want to talk about was the Holloway fight. Um, Max Holloway, um, the last round, you can see he got a little tired. He caught a few to the face. His nose got bloodied. He was still, you know, getting taken down. But every time he got taken down, he'd break out of it. Right. So it was that same thing. He can never really, truly get taken down. But I guess whoever he was fighting was the um, prior champ. And what people have told me is that sometimes they get the bias. So it was one of those things where everyone was watching it. And even Dana White said Holloway got robbed. They said he should have won the fight. But... Yeah. It was a split decision, and they gave it to the champ, the you know previous champ, the returning champ, however you want to say it. Right. But you know, I don't have too much to say about that. But Holloway held his own. I think he controlled the fight. He really set the tone. And you know, the other fighter, he you know he was making a comeback in that last round, but I think it was a little too late, just because he cracked you know Buddy's nose and attempted, you know, a few more takedowns, I don't think that was enough to give him the full fight. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah, he had some heart, but he still didn't get more punches off. And that's why it was a split decision. It wasn't unanimous or anything. It was like split down the middle and they give it to the champ. So right. champ bias, I guess. Yeah, but nice. to, you know, main card, the main card where we're at now, did you see it? I did, man, and and and, and, and honestly, I, I, you know, who are you going for beforehand? Before we before we really dive into it, who's I, mine I, or Masvidal? Masvidal, man, I, I like Masvidal. You know, he's a scrappy, okay, okay, he's a scrappy dude, yeah. he's a strong dude. Like I like his, I like his swag, man. I, I like his, uh, I like his technique, um, man. I, I, you know, I knew that this was going to be a tough fight for him. He but, had to lose, and I think he did lose twenty pounds in six days. Yeah, so that yeah, was another. Yeah. That was another factor. Yeah, it was it was going to be a tough fight for him, and, and honestly, kind of a defining moment in his career if he was able to defeat Usman. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, what, what were your thoughts? I mean, look, man. Like I said, I'm not I'm not super up to date on every single person in the league, right. but from the people who I know and I trust their opinions, they were big up Masvidal. So I was like, you know, Masvidal, man. Like I went into it like. You know, let yeah. me let me go for Masri Dahl. But yeah. when the fight really started, that's when I realized I really don't have a dog in the fight. You know, I don't have anybody to really root for because I don't personally know or keep up with Masri Dahl. I don't personally know or keep up with Usman. But when I started to see it go, I was like, all right, I just want to see a fight. I want to really see what's going to happen here. Like, I know Masri Dahl has been propped up as the underdog. He had to lose 20 pounds in six days. Well, which know. is a beating itself. I mean, oh, I, I, crazy. Crazy that he made weight. Right. Um, but to see his fighting style, you know, he's a scrapper. Right. Usman is a wrestler. So, you know, you want to see an exciting fight. He jumped out the gate attempting flying knees, you know, yeah. kicks, punches. He was lunging. He was hungry. Yeah, he was. He was Usman, a people want to call him, people want to call him uh, boring. But, you know, Usman, he's 12-0. He's and 0. He's undefeated still. So I figured, you know, watching that fight showed me why he's undefeated. Yeah. You know, man, he stuck to his technique. He didn't need to impress or, you know, entertain us. 
kind of like how Mayweather doesn't need to impress or entertain us. They know the game and they play by their technique. People get upset by it, but look, man, whole time he was pinning them up against that, uh, against the fence. And we was making jokes, but he's stomping on his toe. He's stomping on his toe whole time. I'm like, bro, you're going to do anything else but stomp on his toe. But I guess he's wearing him down because when you break out of that, now your foot is hurting. You're not going to be lunging at me, running at me. It's going to be harder for you to move around. You know, you don't think about it at the time. Okay, keep on knocking my toe out. But once, once I let you go, you got to come to me. Every time you step on that foot now, oh, damn, he's been stomping on my toe for the damn. last 10 minutes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, my, my and not only stomping on the toe, yeah, not only stomping on the toe, but he's sending knees to his uh, – his thighs, thighs yeah. so his leg is going to hurt. He, he uh, punching out his ribs. Right. So he was really just breaking him down every time he was pinning him on that wall. And he was doing takedowns too. His takedowns were successful. Masvidal was getting taken down and pinned. Absolutely. And then when he was on the ground, it was just like that um, Aldo fight. He was laying in. He was laying in. The thing I liked about Masvidal is he still had heart. He didn't look like he was getting defeated. You know, he would stand up and smile. I was like, yo, this man's wild out here. He looks like the Joker. He's getting up after being knocked, you know, in the face, and he's laughing. You know what I mean? So nothing's really getting to him. And he was still, you know, fast. He was still lunging up there. He got a few hits off on Usman, but, you know, Usman is a master wrestler, bro, and he really showed out, you know, his technique won. Hey, he showed up and he showed out, man. And, and, and that's not taking anything from Miles Vidal, but, you know, shout out to Miles Vidal. And, uh, but shout out to Usman, man. Just like you said, he was very technical. He was very – he stuck to – I mean, we can go to length to call him the Tim Duncan of the UFC. You know what I'm saying? Like, Come on now. Speak he, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he stuck to the fundamentals, man. Like, he, he, wasn't, yeah. he wasn't trying to impress. He wasn't trying to do – you know, he was trying to stick to his technique, not get hit too many times, have some good takedowns. Exactly. He was wearing mm-hmm. Miles Vidal down because Miles Vidal is more of a brawler than, than a technical guy. You know what I mean? And, I, and honestly, this is a good learning lesson for Miles Vidal, right? Facing a fighter yeah. like him, it's gonna make him up his technical game. Because when you when you come across fighters like this who know how to put put points on the on the board, bro, like yeah, you you have to you know what I'm saying you got to match their game, man. You, you yeah. can't be sloppy with it. So I mean, man, it was a good fight. I thought I thought it was a good fight, man. It wasn't you know, it, it wasn't the quick McGregor uh, swing around elbow, but. You know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or, or the headbutt, you know what I mean? But but it was entertaining. It was still entertaining, man. And I learned a lot, man. I learned a lot just on technique. You know, I don't need to necessarily, you know, see a knockout or, a, you know, a fight to the death. But, you know, I can understand, okay, that's a point. That's a point. That's a point. There's a method to his madness. I can sit there and make fun of, oh, he's just stomping his foot out, man. What is that? Right. But you start to think about it. You stomping on his foot with with all that vigor for all that intensity for however long every round. Mm-hmm. I know leg- he at home icing his feet, bro. Hey, hey, hey! His legs, too. <laughs> his foot swelling up. You know what I mean? Like, come on, G, come and if, on. And if you were not if even not- even Masvidal saying like in his uh, post conference, in his post game, he said, um, "Now I know how he fights." Like, all right, you're going to come back different next time. You're going to learn some techniques. Are you going to learn how to, you know, evade a takedown? Kind of like um, Holloway was doing. Holloway was, you know, he could probably learn a lot from Holloway, that fight that, uh, you know, Max Holloway was in because he was getting taken down and, and he wasn't even touching the floor. Like Buddy would grapple him and like really – be ripping him to the ground and you would just see max do like a <clears throat> you know what i mean like i'm breaking breaking your arms from around me and now i'm backing up like you're not taking me down out here so for my Vidal to continuously be taken down i guess those are some of the things he got to focus on you know um, and for uzman to be to take down a, a, a fighter of Mas Vidal's caliber man that's impressive bro yeah yeah that's impressive you know so I mean, yeah. shout, out to, shout out to them. I think it was. It do was you a think point. that twenty losing twenty pounds? Yeah. Do you think losing twenty pounds in six days had to do anything? I mean, that's it, kind it, of a wild time, you know. Yeah, his body had to be like. I still think he would have lost. 
he would have lost either way because I think he got outworked, outfought. You know, the right. technique was too great for him. But, you know, is that something to think about or consider? I mean, 20 Him pounds, losing that weight in six yeah, days. 20 pounds that quickly, bro, it's like – like, his body was probably worn out. Is your body even used to it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I saw I saw a picture of him with, like, some foil on and a lot of towels. Like, he's just sweating it out. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, is it healthy? <laughs> is it healthy, man? Is it healthy? You know, dehydrated, hungry. Shit, you know, his body's in shock. So. Look, man, I just, I just looked at – I just seen this on the phone. I don't know if y'all can look at that. Yeah, yeah. Unnecessary beating, man. The world talking about it, bro. Like, <laughs> the ref, I guess, is catching backlash. Like, what's up, man? You a professional ref or not? Like, <laughs> I guess that's the biggest story outside of the main card. Like, <laughs> you just see a man getting beat up lifeless. Like, all right, man, it's not even just <laughs> the sport anymore. Like, right. Right. this gotta, is a, gotta, this gotta, is a uh, gladiator. Validate these refs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, look, you don't get paid by the hour, dog. Like, like, call the fight. Call the fight if you think the the fight needs to be called. You know what I mean? And it's just yeah, like, it's yeah. just like, it's just like any sport, bro. Just like all this black football was getting for the helmets, right? It's like people, yeah. you know, taking that many hits to the body or to the face or to the head. Like, yeah. I mean, come on, like, come on. Be a professional. Be a professional, bro. Be a professional. I know you want. To, I know you want the people to have a show. Yeah. I mean, start but, all. Yeah. But the refs aren't the ones out there taking the beating. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Do your yeah. job, like my man Tom Brady. Yeah. Said, do your job. Yeah. Call the fight. But I guess the good thing, the good thing about all this right now is that we could, uh, we could ask our next guest next week. I don't know if you wanna. Uh, yeah. Next week. Uh, next week. Uh, introduce that, but we yeah, could yeah. ask. We could ask our guest next week all these questions. Get some great insight. Yeah, we're going to have a UFC fighter, uh, Neil Magny. Neil Magny on next week. So make sure you tune in to uh, episode five of the COD. Um, Recent, pre- recently just won, uh, Magny had recently just won UFC 248. Facts. Facts. So, you know, we, you know, I guess UFC 251 was just yesterday. So 248, not, you know, not too, too long ago, probably two months ago, if even. Yeah. So, exactly. We'll definitely have an expert sitting with us next week to uh, go over all these questions we have about the league, about refs, about technique, about his record. It's going to be a good conversation. A great conversation, um, man. We're, we're happy to have be, be having him on, and we're happy that you guys are tuning in. And don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, message us if you wanna if you want us to touch on a subject. Uh, or if you uh, have a guest in mind, uh,